Hello! So far in this course, we have discussed several laws of probability and randomness as well as some biases in our intuitive thinking. By avoiding these biases, we hopefully can avoid some mistakes in our decision making. Now we are moving closer to dealing with the big question of this course. How do we effectively make decisions in uncertain situations? In order to do this, we need one more tool from probability theory which is the concept of random variables and their expected values. As we discussed, when dealing with uncertain situations, we treat them as random experiments. In most real-life situations, we look at the possible outcomes and we can assign numerical values to those outcomes. For example, let's say you want to start a business. There are many aspects of this random experiment you would be interested in. For instance, You'd like to know your sales and your profit at the end of your first year. Because we don't yet know what these values will be, we can treat them as random numbers, or as we call them in probability theory, random variables. We can call the sales and profits random variables y and z respectively. Random variables can be applied in many uncertain situations. Say you purchase a stock in a company for $100 today and assign X to the price that a stock will be tomorrow. Tomorrow we get to observe X which could be $102 or let's say $97 etc. When dealing with random variables, we are not only looking at the possible values they could get but also the probabilities of each of these values. An important concept here is the average of the random variable which in probability theory is called the expected value or the mean. Let's revisit the American roulette wheel. Here we have 38 possible outcomes, 18 black numbers, 18 red numbers and 2 greens. Suppose you bet $1 on black. So we can define the random variable x as your profit in this game. In this case, if you win, you get $1, so x equals 1. If you lose, the value of x is minus 1 because you have lost your original $1. Now, we need to look at the probabilities of each of these values. What's the probability that x is equal to 1? That is, what is the probability that you win? In order to win, the outcome must be black. So, it would be 18 divided by 38. Meanwhile, the probability that you lose, that is, the probability that x is equal to minus 1, is 20 over 38. Now, let's say you repeat this experiment many times, say 38,000 times. Then, what will happen? On average, you would win 18,000 times and lose 20,000 times. So, at the end of the day, your total profit would be 18,000 times 1 plus 20,000 times minus 1, which is negative 2,000. In other words, at the end of the day, you would approximately lose $2,000. So your average profit per game would be minus 2,000 divided by 38,000, which is negative 0 0.053. This means that for every game you bet $1 on, you would on average lose 5.3 cents. This demonstrates the concept of the expected value of this random variable. In probability theory, we would write this as the expected value of x is equal to minus 5.3 cents or minus 0.053 dollars. In general, we can obtain the expected value of a random variable as follows. Say x has two values, a and b. Then, you say the expected value of x is simply a times the probability that x equals a plus b times the probability that x equals b. If x has three values, you would also add c times probability that x equals c, and so on. Here, for example, the probability of x being 1 is 18 over 38, and the probability of x being minus 1 was 20 over 38. So our formula would be 18 over 38 minus 20 over 38, which is minus 0 0.053. So what does all this mean? It means that if you repeat this experiment many times independently, 
and take the average, that average approaches the expected value of x. This is the law of large numbers which we talked about in an earlier video. This is also how the casinos take advantage of the law of large numbers. While some people win and some people lose, the experiments, that is the games, are conducted many, many, many times. So, the average will always work in favor of the casino. To summarize, random variables such as x have possible values a, b, c, and so on. Then, we look at the probabilities of these values. To find the expected value of x, we use the formula mentioned earlier. The sum of each value times its probability. The law of large numbers states that, as we repeat the experiment a large number of times, the average value that we observe will be approximately equal to the expected value of the random variable. We will see in upcoming videos, we can take advantage of this law in many situations in everyday life.